G'day everyone, welcome to Grandma's Handbag. My name is Dean. Thank you so much for joining us for a Vinyl Finds. A record roundup, I think this is number 17. And there's a bit of a theme to this one as well. The theme is um, records, recommendations, and shout outs to the people that have recommended them. So stick around. Um, I can't guarantee I'll mention everyone, not even close, but who knows, you may turn up. So, uh, Grandma's Little Helper, we have the lovely Young's Double Chocolate Stout from the UK. You guys brew a very, very tasty beer. This is a lovely dark stout on the sweeter side and all the better for it as well. It actually works really well with chocolate cake, believe it or not. And since I don't have chocolate cake, I've been slowly nibbling away with a little bit of um, a chocolate biscuit um, or cookie. It's got a little bit of a coffee um, center, so very, very nice match if ever you want to get to it. The roast malt dark flavors here, a little sweetness of chocolate, beautiful. Mm, very nice. On the turntable, an Australian band called Totally Mild with the album called Downtime. It's quite a uh, titillating cover really isn't it um, I love the back of it I'll just show you the back of it too alright there you go great stuff very much in the pop mold but anyway um, so yes first things first a shout out to and to get the theme of um, uh, music shout outs and channel shout outs going the first one to Matthew Hayes, uh, or Matt Hayes. Matt got your slightly alternative 80s mix, and what a beautiful package. Was not expecting this at all, and in it comes from the artwork all the way down. Just great stuff, look at that. Four whole discs, as he says, 100% recorded from vinyl, 80s happiness guaranteed. And it's been a really, really lovely thing to go through. Um, quite the education. I've never been a big 80s fan, but this has really been something enjoyable to listen to. I mean, because, you know, it, it's, it's basically a love letter to the 80s spread over four discs from uh, a very well-versed uh, person who knows the ins and outs and, and just the great songs on there. Um, so Matt Hayes, aka Radio United, good to see you are back and broadcasting and doing exactly as your um, old radio station channel says and uniting uh, everyone who's been able to get these in a love of the 80s. The recorded from vinyl part I really love as well because it actually smooths out those glassy, shiny, metallic you know, clean, almost too clean edges that the 80s uh, songs can sometimes be. A lot of things I didn't know on here. Um, some brilliant moments. Uh, I mean, I thought Talk Talks, It's My Life, moving into Roxy Music's More Than This was just a great mashing of almost two polar opposite ends of the, uh, the 80s for me. That kind of infinite uh, excess almost of, of it's my life versus this resign this resignation of, of um is this all there is to more than this brilliant stuff um i compiled very quickly matt uh, five top songs that i got off here i suppose and a couple of them were quite new to me psychedelic furs with uh, their heaven song um i don't know if that's the exact title Anyway, um, Pet Shop Boys, always on my mind. I loved that as a kid. Just a great, great version. I mean, it's hilarious in a way. It's, it's very, very funny. Aforementioned um, 
Talk Talk It's My Life. <laughs> Fantastic song. Really, really, really um, blew my mind with XTC's Dear God. Now, it's a song I've heard about, but never listened to. Um, I don't know why. But anyway, that was just a draw-dropping moment. And probably my favourite song on here was um, Rise by Public Image Limited. The mantra, anger is an energy, is just probably for me the epitome of what John Lydon did. So definitely living up to the alternative 80s there, Matt. Thank you so much. Really enjoying that. Okay, let's get into it. And actually, this gun also goes out to you, Matt. You must have been inspiring. Well, you certainly have with your channel. Um, I couldn't leave this alone. Now, this turns up on the 80s mix. I found this a couple of months ago, three dollars. Um, but I remember it very fondly as a almost a gimmick song, a very trashy song from the 80s, but it still really captured my imagination. Thank you, love, as well. It's not a 12 inch single. Oh, no, 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 we can't have that imperial measurement. It's a 30.5 centimeter single. <laughs> uh, anyway. Sorry, it's my weird behavior, uh, my weird thinking. But anyway, we've got Wild Wild West, a single edit, a dance misc, and a dub club on there. So there you go, Australian Press. With Matt Hayes definitely in mind when I picked that up. All right, this next one, um, I don't know who I'm, who I'm channeling or thanking here. Um, more in terms of general inspiration, but uh, it's something I could definitely imagine Christopher Keebler picking up, uh, and I couldn't leave it there at all. So, forms in instrumental music, uh, examples by chamber orchestra and piano, uh, and this is a Folkways Records recording. So, original one, you can see that lovely Folkways label on there. Um, very sadly, this record was warped, so I haven't even listened to it, but the thing I love with Folkways is that you actually get a booklet inside that then goes through the theoretical notation, the musical works and things. Absolutely lovely piece, but as far as a, I don't want to say esoteric, but interesting um, find goes, something of the calibre that um, Christopher Keebler would pick up. This to me definitely sort of fit the bill, so I will need to find a way to uh, see if I can unwarp it or uh, at least stream it and have a listen. Anyway, this next one could easily also be a Christopher Keebler one, but I'm going to shout out this time to Calm Gorvo 31 who's been a huge influence on me since I've joined up to the VC with a lot of different listening um, to what I normally would. Uh, and this one here just jumped right out at me as well. I think uh, Calm's on a, a bit of a classical music kick at the moment. And from the cover on down, this just sort of screamed modern classical. Now what really drew me in was the name Teo Macero, uh, who I knew from uh, producing Miles Davis classic ones in the late 60s and 70s. Um, not only that, that cover there is just amazing. If you're wondering what this is, believe it or not, it's a newspaper cutting that someone has put to, uh, to here. If I can read it out, it says, The disc also contains two pieces by Calvin Hampton, Triple play for Anders Martin and two pianos and catch up for two pianos and tape, which I found academic and uninspiring. Well, actually, I've got a couple of needle drops, so if you want to have a listen, the first one might well be the um, Calvin Hampton with Anders Martin. Have a listen to that, and then I've popped on some Teo Macero there as well, so see what you think of this.
just want to show as well, you've got that lovely flip backs. Well, I suppose it's not technical flip back sleeve, but it's pasted on there. Someone's put a date, 17668. Uh, and interestingly as well, we've also got the music and video exchange of Notting Hill. Um, so this has been in their rotation. £18 it originally sold for. I tell you what, I got it for uh, less than a tenth of that price. And I'll just show you quickly the lovely Odyssey. Odyssey label. Beautiful. Really, really nice. So this is aligned with Columbia. Um, I suppose an experimental classical label in a way. But there we go. Interesting listen indeed. Alright, this next one is from... I forget the exact name, Campo007, Anthony Camploni. Um, I saw him pop this up recently and it was a, just a great reminder to go pick up a real um, cult classic 90s album, if I'm allowed to call it that. Bark Psychosis with Hex. This got a re-release, I think, end of last year, early this year, in uh, a thousand copies. Um, and it's a beautiful, really well done pressing, remastered by the band themselves, um, and you can have a listen here. Yeah. Post-rock, firmly on the um, talk-talk end of the spectrum of post-rock, full of mystery and intrigue, uh, twists and turns galore, but underneath it all is just this amazing quality and attention to detail in performance, and also in uh, composing these pieces, bringing them together from very disparate elements of recording. Beautifully done. Um, the only thing that's probably not beautifully done is it's a double record, um, 45 RPM, which is a good thing, but, you know, I, I still kind of prefer a, a gatefold, you know. However, as I always say, the music is what matters, and yeah, look, it's sounding lovely, so, Anthony, thank you for the reminder on that, um, yeah great stuff really appreciate it and another person on the oh, I suppose not on the fringe but a good friend of Anthony's and our New Zealand correspondent or one of them anyway James Buttery just popped this up recently and it is yeah Vashti Bunyan's just another diamond day. Now this has been a favourite of mine since the moment I first heard it. Since its very first re-release in 2000. I'm just trying to look up now and see if I can see where my initial copy is. Um, there we go. So that's a 2000 CD release of it. Um, and I've had it since then. Incredible stuff. But it's been re-released now in a uh, 1,000... I don't know actually how limited limited it is. Uh, might be a 1,000, but apparently this is the best press yet that's been done of it. Um, and very, very nice to have it in there. An imitation of the Philips label, original Philips one. So, yeah, look, this album will turn up again... I'm still tabling my um, top 100 records of all time and um, Vashti's 
is in there so I have a little more to say on it then thank you James for the uh, heads up on that being reissued now this next one speaking of top hundreds um, is one that turned up I think in the top 10 maybe even the top 5 of Andrew Tales from the Crates top 100 and yeah we've got Towns Van Zant here I only had the chance to spin this once, but I, I know that I'm just going to fall deeper, deeper in love with this one. It's just a Fat Possum reissue, but I was able to get this for 17 I'm going to say $17.50 Australian. So that might be, you know, under 13 US dollars. Incredible price for a brand new record. Um, so yeah, really, really happy to add this in, just a plain label mimicking the album there, but all quality. Um, yeah, first Towns, and I don't think it'll be the last one by any stretch. I love that sort of amalgam of blues you can hear in there, um, clearly a folk influence, the country seeps in, it's an absolute melting pot. Of stuff but what overrides all of that is just I mean the the songwriting is is incredible it's almost a master class in action great performance and there's just something I think universal about Town's voice there's a a blue note you know there's a, a moment where it, it cracks into something beyond plaintive and into a universal kind of truth Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Thank you. And I suppose just on that as well, this came up recently. Um, it's a second copy and exactly the same as uh, Andrew again, um, Tales from the Crate. It says it's, it's one of those ones I now will pick up at every opportunity. Um, this is an Australian press. My previous one's in English. Um, so that perhaps one day I can give... A better cop, the better, or one of the two copies, a uh, another home because that is just an album that that is criminally uh, neglected, I think, by the wider community. But but there's certainly people that know the value on this, so very happy. I think that was about fifteen dollars. Um, as you can see, this next one is uh, I haven't got around to taking the stickers off. This is probably um, an early 70s Australian repress on Crown of Creation, Jefferson Airplane. Now this uh, was played a, a few months ago by um, Diana Dean in the crate. She put a needle drop on this and there was just something so spooky about the way those guitars... The acoustic guitars were recorded in the late 60s. Incredible stuff. Um, so I put this on. Completely freaked the wife out one day. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's generally a good sign, I have to say. Anyway, I'll just give you a quick look. So yeah, you've got that sort of 70s uh, RCA label in there. Um, but what... What a great album. I have to say I prefer the airplane version of Triad to the um, Dave Crosby version on the um, outtakes from the Torious Bird Brothers. That album, that version is probably a bit too earnest for me, to be honest. Something doesn't sit right. But on here, brilliant stuff. Um, yeah, look, great, great album. Thank you for... Um, needle dropping Diana because I honestly thought that the best of airplanes stopped, started and stopped at uh, Surrealistic Pillow. Clearly it doesn't. Alright, last one I just want to shout out and leave you with a little taste is a record sent to me I <laughs> believe it or not it's actually a, a second copy but my good friends are in this band, gentlemen. So, um, Gino, Paul, Ed, uh, and I'm forgetting the other band members at the moment. 
This is basically a double EP as an LP, Night Reels. Um, and I'm going to leave you with uh, the track Late Night. Nah, Late Night. Um, as a closer, but incredibly talented bunch of guys. Uh, I think they've got a second album just about to come out. This is their first from 2014 from memory. Um, so if you like what you hear, check them out on Bandcamp. Um, very interested to hear what they've got going on next. Anyway, that's for sure. And very lucky again to have this uh, sent through to me. So hope you enjoy. Thank you everyone for checking in. Thank you to um, new subscribers and to current ones. Really appreciate all your support. Um, it's a real privilege to be able to talk music and uh, you know converse with all of you as well. So that's it from me. Take care, everyone, and I'll talk to you all very, very soon. Hope you have a great week. Cheers.